This SCP will solve us all the problems to manage events on Google Calendar and databases in the same time. Let me show you how you can implement that. Are you building an AI agent, reservation system, or any chatbot? And then it's a little bit complex handle with API calendars. Doesn't matter if Google Calendar or any other API. And the complexity increase when you have to handle at the same time databases based on these events. For the first problem in the past, based on a student student feedback, I created a NCP calendar that has been super useful and a lot of people use now. But in the middle of the development with one of my clients, I face another issue related with the calendars because sometimes we need to track off in all databases events. And this way, the AI agent has to use the NCP and the Superbase or any database that you use nodes. That's increase the complexity, increase the problem, and increase the issues coming. That's why I created a special solution for that. Yes! A new NCP empowered it with a Superbase to handle all this in only one NCP. That's mean that events always have been tracked off or always have the same status in the database and in the Google Calendar. It's not depend on the AI agent, the hallucinations. Because once all the logic is in the NCP, once the AI agent call an NCP function, this function handle all stuff related with calendar APIs and the database in the same time. We are going to change from this to this, and now with a new NCP to this. It's simpler, it's easier to the AI agent, it's easier for us to develop and to debug. All those nodes and those are here. It's cool. Let's take a look, a quick little demo, how this works. Let's do a quick little demo. First of all, hey, uh, do you have any event tomorrow? It's super useful for this application where you have to handle calendars and reservations such as a doctor appointment application, an application, all these kinds of applications, you can do that. Cool. Let's see, seems like a tomorrow we have uh, two meetings. Cool. But now, can I create? What do you need to create a meeting? This question is, the reason of this question is why I have so, so poor on. But, of course, it's up to you and up to in your implementation, improve this problem. Cool. And start date will be 5 p.m. Even title, CML, YouTube, meeting. What else? Attendee, any mail. I'm going to write down any mail here. Summary, testing. And location is Buenos Aires, Palermo. It's a neighborhood here in Buenos Aires. Let's test it. Cool, let's see what's happened. Validating after, the, well, first of all, validate the visit time. And after that, create a new event. And since like the event is already there. Yeah, it's there. Take a look. The database, um, since this is the event that we created, here there is an issue. But this issue is related with the time sum. I am sending the wrong time sum because it's I'm sending the New York time zone when I am in Buenos Aires. That is the main issue. But we can see here, okay, we have this event in our calendar. But now I'm going to tell to them, hey, can you remove this event? It's no longer needed. Can you put is, well, I remove the moment memory. Let's say it is the event to tomorrow. 
at 5 p.m. Checking. Let's see what is what was the event. First of all, they called the NCP just to get the event in a gap of time. And after that, delete, delete event was applied. Let's take a look. It's no longer here. And in the update database, I expect a cancelled that is cool. That is working as expected and is super powerful, guys, because now you have all the logic related with the database events in one NCP. Now, if you want to empower this NCP, you have to improve a little bit your prompt, create a little bit more complex prompts. But something so important here is always provide details about the date. The date and the date. We have, for example, here, I am sending the time sum and what is the, is Monday, is Thursday. It's important because this way the chatbots will understand what is tomorrow, what is the next Monday, and all this common instruction that we provide to this kind of chatbot. We are going to build this from scratch. We are going to build that. We are going to take a look under the hood, but you need a little bit concepts. It's not for beginners and it's not for experts, neither if for middle level NNN developers or NNN users. If you are beginner, I can recommend to you a course. And if you let me a comment, I can give you this course totally discount. But there is also, there are a couple of requirements. First of all, the NCP version one. You can go to my website and download it. And also you need a super base setups already done on your end at end. If you need a video about it, let me know in the comments and I create one. Another one is an NNN account. If you don't have any NNN account, I can give you a special discount using a link that I'm going to leave in the comment as well. The goal here, decrease the complexity of the AI agents using the calendar actions. The calendar stuff, handle the calendar will be easier for you and for the AI agents as well. Important here, I'm going to provide to you a super big query that you can use and even you can add any other fields based on your needed. Uh, it is a super common event model, but you can add on stuff that you need in the model. Stop to talk and jump to the business to see what we have under the hood. Let's see under the hood. The first requirement is the NCP Google Calendar version one. The second one is you have to already set up your super base. And the most important thing here before jump to the code or code or drag and drop nodes on N8N is the query that you have to run in Superbase. I'm going to show you in the last part of the video, but first of all, let's see what was the improvement of the version one to a version two. Starting with, we have a new fields here, right? Now we, we have even title, summary, attendees, or attendees is only one for now, locations. And we improve a couple of the paths that we have in the NCP. Also, here in the create event flow, we add the new fields such as even title, summary, attendee, and location. The rest of them keep the same way. You can take a look at here as well, and the rest keep in the same way. Now, starting path by path of the action, starting with the validate ability of the event, we have our ability keeping the same way. Any change here. Here, in the event and delete event path, what's the path that changed the more change? Because in the past, only have one node. But now we have validation, access to the databases, and error handler. Starting with this node, I add a validation because 
I add this node that is a get get only one. And based on the event ID provided before, this responds the status. But I think the best way to show you is show you a previous execution. Here we have a previous execution. Cool. Let's say after 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 validate the validate node, they execute did execute and provide to us this JSON. And we can see here a status. And then what is the validation? What is the conditional? Well, the status is not equal to cancel it. Because something that you have to understand, Google Calendar API doesn't remove the elements, just change the status. And that's why when it's canceled, we all we just threw error. That's it. A simple error. And if the status is different to cancel it, cool. We delete that and this keep in the same way. And we add this new guy. That is the super base delete no. But it's up to you if you want to add a conditional here. But go back to the by conditionals or the editor, sorry. Here we can add a conditional node, such as if, just to validate if the delete action was successful. And this way we avoid uh, differences between the calendar and the databases. It's up to you. It's a good recommendation. Maybe I'm going to add it. And um, okay, cool. I want to show you what is the, the node. The node is a super base node and important here. In my case, in my use case, was update road, right? Because I, we don't want to delete the element, just change the status. This keep in the same way. And here you have to add a conditional. Just click on what is the file, the field, is even ID equal to, and just paste in the even ID provided. That's it. And here, what is the data that we are going to change? In my case, it's a status, just a status. And the new status will be cancelate. That's it. And this way, we implement a new flow. Um, it's more complex, more robust, and it's much better when you have to handle that calendar and database in the same time. Now, jump to the next one create path the create path this keep in the same way what is new here let's do a comparison after this point after this sorry after this point we have a conditional let's say what well, well let's say we have in this conditional basically if available or not and if so create the events just to valid just to make sure that we create the events when the create event calendar full calendar was successful and we create that. This is the new node, superbase nodes. And here in superbase, we have create a row. Cool. Once we have a create a row, I already have a list of row that I have to assign, right? But you have to click on add field. You just select the field, right? And the value. There are the dynamically high values such as time, sum, attendee, uh, name. But in this point, status for my use case, and I think for most of the use cases, will be hard coded in this point. In this, in this point, will be booked. Cool. And this way, we have the second new path that was updated. Now, this guy the updated flow. What we have here, only this guy, is the, is the, this guy, the node, super bay node, and just apply this node. And here we, we have the same at the delete path. But remember, delete, we use the update operation. And here the same, we are going to use the update operation based on the even ID and 
we are going to change the event started date and the event end date. That's it. Even the status will be kept in the same way. This is something important because every time that we update something in the database, we update a, a special field called updated at. We are going to see that in the Superbase query. And don't worry about it because I'm going to share with you. But here, the last update. This was based on the experience because when I have been working with my client using this NCP because this NCP has been using in real world production chat box. Here, there is a performance issue because this guy, this Google Calendar node provides me all the events that I have in a gap of time, right? And this creates, let's say if I have 10 events, it creates 10 and 8 and items. That's why I add an aggregated node just to put all together in only one and provide this in, in only one item. Cool. We already have all this guy, but the important stuff, or one of the important stuff is the query. Here I have the query in the super bay. Don't worry about the query because I'm going to share it with you. In the downloaded file, you have the query and the, the end date and code as well, and even extra instruction on how you can use that. But the query, basically, first of all, we create a table. And I think even name, even ID, description, all these fields will be common. And if you want to add new one, just add it. That's it. After that, we have some indices just to better query performance. Let's say I have, I want to, I want to share by status, create add this just to improve that. And this is the special functionality. Maybe if you are not familiar with databases, we can assign triggers the same, the same functionality that we implement and end and end. And that's when we update something in the database, an element in the database, a row in the element in the database. Automatically run a function and this function update or update at. And this way we always know what was the last updated of the event in the table. After that, I just add some documentation comments uh, just if some people is not familiar with them, with the databases. And that's it, guys. Here, this is the way that your AI agent decreases the logic that and decrease the amount of node that your AI agent will use. Super helpful. And this was implementing because I got a real problem with that where my NCP calendar handle the, the Google Calendar API and I have eight databases to handle the events. And that was one of the implementation that I did to improve that and decrease how long was the prompt. If you want this video, subscribe, like this video because this helped me so much.